thylacine back in the day uh, before they became extinct. I took down a large prey item such as a, uh, a, a, a paddy melon like this. Um, that animal went down and it's sort of in a valley near waterways and things like that. That animal can break down and then and then cause that uh, that waterway to become uh, to, to become contaminated. Whereas, <laughs> that's pretty fancy. You tell them. <laughs> so yeah, so that, that can cause that waterway to become uh, contaminated. Well, that's where the Tasmanian devils step in. They're able to clean up these animals before they contaminate waterways. And, uh, and, and, and sort of uh, spread disease in that sort of a way. Um, so they are pretty much going to clean up the whole entire carcass. So they're very well made to be able to clean up and, uh, and, and crush all of the bones, eat all of the skin, the eyes, the fur, the ears, the everything. It's all gonna go. Um, whereas something like a spotted tail quoll or a thylacine that are taking down those larger prey items, um, they're unable to eat the whole thing. So they're just going to eat maybe the heart and a bit of thigh muscle or something really easy to eat. And then they're going to leave the rest of it around. Which sounds like a bit of a, a, a waste. But back in the day before humans were going along and providing a whole lot of food along the side of our roads for our Tasmanian devils, the thylacines and the spotted tail quolls provided just enough food to sustain the Tasmanian devil population. And so it worked really, really well. Um, making sure that, uh, that, that there weren't too many dead animals lying around. These guys were going along cleaning them up. And if food did get a little bit scarce, um, these guys uh, are, are known to also do a little bit of hunting. Not a great deal. They're not very good at um, they're, they're not very uh, good at being able to uh, hunt. Being their, uh, their, their short, stocky size, being made to pull a, pull things apart, work together uh, to be able to pull apart the animals. Um, they're not very good at running, they can only run about 14 kilometres an hour and uh, generally only for, uh, for, for about 80 metres before they become puffed out because uh, their, their, their gait isn't very, uh, very well established to be able to run very fast so far. They seem very clumsy too when they're pulling around and trying to climb things, like not as nimble or as agile. No, 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 nowhere near as agile as something like a spotted tail quail or even an eastern quail. You can see this one here, how he's uh, sort of pushing all of the other devils around with his bottom um, so there is uh, is basically saying here bite me on the bottom so that I don't get bitten well so we, we don't at, at this age because they're not uh, sexually mature yeah. we generally don't see any sort of top dog yeah. um, you, you can see one that sort of sort of causes more trouble um, but generally that's the one that's a little bit more scared <laughs> than all the others so they, they, they will sort of um, uh, sort of jump in and try and get the food and then they'll back off really quickly but if they get on the nerve of the wrong devil um, they'll, they'll, they will sort of uh, mm. get some bites and all that sort of stuff and we, we generally have to treat all of those sort of things um, but yeah so most of the time when there's enough food around and, uh, and, and they know that there's enough to go around they're generally pretty civil like this but they are very aware of one another on the carcass you can see them using their uh, their whiskers to be able to know where each and every devil is. Stop nibbling. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little Marnie. Oh, sorry, Mocker. Marnie's here chewing the tail, <laughs> um, trying to uh, trying to harass me instead of playing with their friends with the carcass. <laughs> but yeah, so they, um, they they do mostly uh, they, they do mostly respect each other on the carcass because they know the devil next to them has the same amount of teeth. And the uh, and the same sort of jaw pressure. They don't want to get in the way of that devil that's sitting next to them, and uh, and that's why they're not really getting in the way of me. <laughs> oh, he got in the way, <laughs> and, and that's why they're not really uh, attacking and carrying on with me. Uh, it's because I'm pretty much another devil on this carcass. So if I was to grab one of these not so yummy bits of the carcass and start pulling it away from the devils, they're pretty much going to respect me as another devil and uh, and pretty much con continue eating their food they're very very focused oh that's not very nice um, <laughs> they're, they're pretty much focused on directly what's in front of their nose um, because not only are they eating every single different part of this carcass but they're eating a lot of it in one go so a tasmanian devil can eat up to 40 percent of its own body weight in one sitting so that's like me going down to the mole creek pub here and asking for a 30 kilo steak and then polishing it off in 40 minutes like it's not gonna happen <laughs> like, this, these guys are amazing at what they do and uh and and they do that because as i mentioned before they don't uh they, they don't eat during their uh the, during their breeding time 
Um, so they're going off that food for quite a, a, a long period of time. So they're building up those fat reserves so that they can use them up uh, during that time. And if food becomes scarce, um, then they're able to uh, to starve themselves then too. <laughs> There's something with animals and radios. I think every single animal likes to eat a radio. <laughs> um, but yeah, so these... Sorry? You receive them this they, they, these guys get this once per day yeah. and uh, and sometimes they'll even get a bigger carcass because they're young and their metabolism is quite fast and um, I remember when that was me and I could eat all I could in one day and I'd still be skinny the next day that's these guys so they, these guys will eat until they look like they've swallowed a bowling ball hole and then they'll again radio <laughs> Um, but yeah, so they, uh, the, the, they will basically look like they've swallowed a bowling ball hole and they waddle back to their, uh, the, back to their den into a food coma and uh, pretty much the next day they'll look like a skinny lean devil again. Looks like we haven't even fed them. So they're, uh, they're, they're, they've got an incredibly fast metabolism when they need to have an incredibly fast metabolism to be able to grow and, and make use of that. But if they're not offered that food, um, they're able to go without it and they're, they're able to sort of survive until their next food. Um, but yeah, so a scene like this is sort of where you start to see devil's facial tumour uh, starting to be a real problem. Now we don't have that in captivity. We've got a lot of different uh, we've got a lot of different methods to be able to stop that from happening. Um, mainly our perimeter fence is, is devil proof, and uh, and the fences that you're leaning on is not only to keep the Tassie devils in, uh, but it's also to keep the wild Tasmanian devils out. And um, it's a, a very big problem here in Tasmania with uh, with captive devils. And um, if, if a wild devil wants to get in, it can cause a lot of different issues. Um, but yeah, so um, with devil facial tumors.